Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I've been doing a lot of work with my laser lately and I figured this is a good opportunity to give you a new introduction to that tool. Uh, today's project is I have to do a bunch of these tumblers, so I'm going to be using my new Rotoboss rotary, which is super adjustable and really easy to set up and use. So we're going to get that shoved in the machine and I'm going to show you how to use it. So setup for this is pretty easy. We just fired up the machine and it's going to go home itself so it knows where the back corner is and then it's going to go to the last known origin point. So now the thing has homed itself and we're back to origin so I'm going to drop the bed way down. We'll start right about there. You can take the fixture and set it in roughly where I think it ought to go. It's about good enough. So you can see that I've got the nozzle directly over the center of this left side hand wheel. And now I'm going to run it over to the right side and we're going to line up that right side with it. So this end has to get pushed just a little bit forward. Now I can check it. There, that looks perfect so we'll run it back over. I'm sure I bumped it a little bit. Actually that looks pretty darn good. So now I know that this plane is perfectly in line with the gantry. It's going to go straight back and forth across the cup, which is what we're looking for. So now I've got the gantry lined up with the rotary, and I can stick in one of the cups that I'm going to use. And as long as I don't bump this thing around, I can just sort of twist this screw in the back, slide that other part of the rotary forward, and get it in place. But you can see this is way out of level, and I need that to be level. So we'll just grab a level, and we'll tar start twisting on this screw until the bubble comes across where we want it to be. And I can raise this side or lower this side or do both, whatever it takes to get that bubble right in the middle. So that looks pretty good. Now this has just a little bit of a shape to it, so up high it's a little out of level, down low it's a lot out of level, but most of the artwork is going to go right, you know, top three quarters of the mug. So if I get it pretty level right there, then I'm pretty confident. So now this is square, this is level. Now we just have to get the laser head over the top center of this thing. And to do that, I just kind of eyeball at what I think is the topmost point of this, and I put a piece of tape with a line on it so that I know it's a little bit more precise than just guessing. So we're just gonna put our dot right on that line. That's pretty darn close. I can just rotate it. We're good. And I'm going to hit origin on the machine so the machine knows this is where I want to return to every time. Now I'm going to run the probe back to that exact spot and touch it off there so that the machine knows the focus height. So that looks about right. I can hit focus, enter on the keypad and you can see it's touching off right on that point. So now the machine knows exactly where to start carving, but the laser point is not on the spot anymore, but because we already hit origin in that exact spot, I can just tap go to origin and it returns to where I need it to be. So now the jig and the laser are all set to work perfectly together. I just have to essentially disconnect the Y axis and reconnect it so that the rotary turns in the Y axis. In my machine, that's really quite simple. I don't have to disconnect anything. I just have to connect the machine to this extra cord I've got going on. So there's the connection. And rather than unplugging anything, I just come over to my panel and I have a rotate button. Now if I try to move the Y axis on my controller, it's going to rotate the cup instead of moving the gantry. So at this point, the nozzle is fixed in place and it can only move left and right while the cup turns. And once again, I got to get back on my mark, so I just hit go to origin and we're back where we need to be. Now this isn't a tutorial in the software itself, but we've got to have a little bit of a look at how it works together with the machine. And the first thing you have to know is the work surface that you have. So I've got a flexible tape. You can do it in standard or metric. All these Chinese lasers come set up in metric, so I'm trying to make my brain work that way. But I know my work surface is 140 millimeters tall 
and I know from experience that oh, 80 to 90 millimeters is really all I want to wrap around the mug before it starts to look distorted and doesn't quite look right. Now this is light burn. I'm not going to teach you everything there is to know about this in this video. I just want to show you the setup for this. I already have a box that's made to 140 millimeters tall by 90 millimeters wide. And now I know it's, I've got that transposed, but that's because the mug is sitting horizontally in the machine, so we can't have our artwork going this way. Now, down here we have our origin point, the left side center, because that's where our little mark is on our blue tape. Now I've already imported the artwork. Here's what we're going to engrave. I need to rotate that 90 degrees and if you just hold shift while you click and drag, it'll lock into positions. So now this is clearly way too big to fit in our artboard. So knowing that we have roughly 90 millimeters in this dimension to work with, we're going to hit the padlock to keep the ratio correct and we're going to change the height to, let's go 85 and see what it looks like. Now, those are not centered. The, this cup doesn't have any logos on it anywhere, so it doesn't necessarily have to be centered, but my brain wants it to be square. So if I come up here and hit this bullseye button, this is absolutely centered in our work surface. But that's going to look a little silly, so again, I'm going to hold shift and just jump that forward a little bit. Now I know that this green dot is the absolute center. This is the start point between the bare stainless and the black powder coating and I want this down a little bit from that. It would feel a little bit congested to have it right up against it. So we're gonna start with it about this far away from that line. So we're gonna hit frame and show us where that artwork's gonna be. It drops down a little ways, which I like. It ends up right about here and right about here. So that might wrap around just a little bit too much. It comes down this far, which is perfect, but it, I think it's too big. I think we need to lower the size on this a little bit. So I'm just gonna drop that 85 dimension down to, let's try 79. All of these numbers are irrelevant. It's just stuff you play with until you find what you like. So one more time, we're gonna frame. In relation to this piece of tape, we're a lot smaller now. So that, that logo is gonna end up right about here. And I think that's about right. So the last thing you have to know is the speed and power settings. And I have found that for these cups, which I'll give you a link to, uh, I have found that these settings work really well with my machine. I'm giving you this as a starting point, not as a hold me to it, this is, this is law. This is just 250 millimeters per second is how fast the gantry moves and the, the rotary turns and 26% power. This tends to work pretty well for me. And the last number that's worth knowing is this interval or scan gap. Uh, I like about 390 dots per inch. That ends up being a lot of passes and it makes it take a little bit longer, but it gives me a cleaner line when it's all said and done. If you drop that number way down, you could reduce your laser time by quite a bit, but I found that this is where I like mine to be set. So the very last step is gonna be pull off that piece of tape, make sure that this is positioned exactly where I want it, then I'm gonna turn on the uh, blower and hit start. There's the blower. All my settings are right. Here we go. So I made a very simple but very critical mistake in running that first cup. I set the whole laser up so that it knew it was running a rotary, but I forgot to set the software up so it knew it was running a rotary. There is a tiny little checkbox here that says enable rotary. And that's very important because the motors on the laser run at a different speed than the motors on the rotary itself. So if the software doesn't know which one it's running, it's running it at the wrong rate of turn, essentially, which means my logo here got very stretched out. In the software, we have it set at 75 millimeters, which would be the correct ratio, but because it turned slower than it was supposed to, or faster, I can't get my brain around that, it actually ended up stretched way out, and this is 125 millimeters from tip to tip. So I've got that checkbox, corrected now, we'll throw another one in there and get it done correctly this time.
Once you get on a roll and you have everything running smoothly, you just grab the spring-loaded clip, slide the cup out, throw your next one in there, shut the lid and hit start. It's just that simple. This was the first run where I didn't have the checkbox clicked inside a light burn, and here's the second one. I didn't change anything else other than that checkbox. So it's very important to get those two things corrected. Now this will get a little bit shinier as soon as we clean it up. There's a little bit of soot and grime left behind after the laser removes the powder coating. The steel isn't as shiny as it ought to be. So this is how I like to clean it up. And I did not create this. I saw it in a video on how to treat your tumblers and I just copied it. You get yourself some LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner. I put it in a spray bottle, hit it up just a little bit, and this is a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. And you just sort of scrub the spot that has the most uh, soot and debris on it, and then wipe it back off. And now our laser, our steel is a lot shinier and our laser lines are a lot cleaner. Well, that's what I've got for you today, guys. It's really simple to start making these cups. The Roto Boss really is just the best of the best as far as these rotaries go. Uh, I've got a link down in the description for where you can go find that, and if you use the coupon code GUNFLINT, you can get 5% off of yours. Uh, I'll also leave links to where I get these tumblers. They're actually just coming off of Amazon. It's as good a price as anything that I've found. These are a really nice quality with no branding on them, so they're really good for this sort of project. Um, and that's really about it for today. I would like some comments. What do you think of the laser projects? What did you think of the rotary? What else would you like me to see me do with the laser? I haven't really done much for videos on it yet because I haven't been sure how to incorporate the laser into woodworking videos. I use it a lot for branding, for cutting out parts, that sort of thing. But what would you guys like to know? Leave me a comment. And that's about it. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you next time. We'll talk at you next time. No one's talking back to me. Well, in the comments, you can talk back. Although, be nice. Okay, this has gone on too long. See you guys.